Hi, real quick before we get into today's message, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into our YouTube channel out of all the channels you could be watching. We know that you are inspired and motivated by all the messages that you are hearing. So this is what I would like you to do. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. This will ensure that you'll know of all the upcoming events and the direction of the church. Also, you're going to find some links in the bio. Connect with us or choose Jesus. Click on that link and share with us your experience so we can better help you in your walk with Jesus. Again, we are so grateful that you are here with us today. So let's connect right into the message. Well, good morning. That was awesome, wasn't it? Good job, Mai Mai. I was here coaching her, so everything you see is because of me. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. She's awesome, isn't she? That was really good. Nice video. Yeah, sign up for our What's Next class. Learn a bit about faith builders. We want you to recognize your gifts so that you can do something for Jesus. Amen. I also want to let you know the first Wednesdays of every month, say first Wednesdays. First Wednesdays for the remainder of the year is going to be prayer night. So if you can set aside first Wednesdays of every month to be here, we gather uh, around 60 people to pray. I think it's the pivotal point. Well, I know it's the pivotal point of a church, isn't it? When saints are praying. So set your calendars. In two weeks, we'll be doing it again. And we've got a really awesome format that we've changed. And I think that you'll love to be a part of that. Amen? And we're not going to make you take a mic. Take a deep breath. Just, okay. You won't have to take a mic, I promise, but I know that you'll really be blessed, so praise God. Well, it's good to see everybody. Welcome to church. I'm so glad that you chose the house of the Lord today, amen. And uh, I'm on part three of a series called Called. You are called by the Lord. And what I've loved about the messages that we've seen from the Sunday morning platforms is that with my dad speaking now, um, you see a picture puzzle coming together of what God is looking for his church. And I think specifically also for this church. And so I just really encourage you to take back the last six weeks or so of the services and, and just re-listen to them because you're going to see a picture of what God is really wanting for this house. That God has chosen you by the Lord to do something significant for the kingdom of God. Amen. And so I don't know, I'll probably be finishing this particular part of this series up, but um, this message this morning is called Your Most Important Assignment. Your most important assignment. And I want this to encourage you today and provoke you today to realize that God has something significant in your life as a Christ follower. Um, I want to ask you this morning, uh, what kind of Christian are you? What kind of Christian are you? God has called us to be bold believers God's called us to be passionate for the kingdom of God. Do you know this morning that you've been chosen by the Lord? God is looking for Christ followers that are uh, hearing the daily mission from the Father, opening up the word of God and hearing what God is saying in this time. How many know we need a fresh word from God? His word never changes, but sometimes we need a fresh word. You know, we can rely on the old word for a little while, and then it starts to get a little moldy. But I believe God's calling us to have a fresh word from heaven. I believe God is calling his church to have a sensitivity of the Holy Spirit, to really discern the voice of the Holy Spirit, and not to live for ourselves any longer, but to live for the Holy Spirit and the mission of God. You know, you find five, five times in the New Testament where the epistles in uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were, was commissioned to the believers five times to go into all the world and preach the good news to be a living example, to be witnesses of what they've seen of Christ and to share the good news and to baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we have to rewire ourselves that sometimes we just wait for Sunday to be a part of our kingdom building. But if you look at the old church, they were building the kingdom every day. They were witnesses for Christ. And you are called to be a witness of Christ to this lost and dying world. Amen. This church will flow in the position that it's called to when we as a church realize that it's not just Pastor Barb or our Bishop and Pastor Gloria and the pastors and elders that bring a good, you get good word. I'm just saying. It's okay. You don't have to shout me down. I know y'all are spoiled with the word. 
You get good word, but that's not what God's calling us to just to get a good word. You get the word and you go into the highways and the byways and you share the word that you've got and you bring it into your communities and into your homes. You know, that's how the early church was built. They would daily go to the temp temple. They'd get the word of the apostle, not a YouTube trending influencer. Know those who labor among you is all I'm saying. You get the apostles and prophets that cut you sometimes, that make you a little uncomfortable sometimes. How many know that's the word that we need sometimes, amen? And we get that word, and then we go share the word that the apostles and prophets are speaking about the kingdom of God. And so you find that five times, and, you know, you may sit here this morning, and I know you love Jesus, but God's not called you just to live a normal Christian life. You know, we can get comfortable and go, well, I love Jesus, but I'm not going overboard. Don't ask me to do too much. I'm just a regular Christian, and I'm not mocking it. I think sometimes we think that's all that we really are, that maybe you're just a, a mom that takes care of your children, not just a mom, but, you know, a mom, and, and you have your 24-7 life and your jobs, and you think, well, that's really all that I am. But when you looked at kingdom, that's not who you are at all. You're not called to just be a normal Christian that works to receive a paycheck. That's not the Bible. God has called you to a kingdom influences of witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think now there's kind of like a, I, I, was, I was studying this and putting it together. I feel like God is bringing us to a checkpoint in our life. Especially I'll talk to those of us who have been serving Jesus for a little minute. That we, we run so passionately for God and we're on this marathon to cross the finish line for all that God's called us to do. But sometimes we have to, we have to stop at the checkpoint to find out are we good. It, runners that are running a marathon, they have checkpoints for them so that they know that they're healthy to finish the race. And so these checkpoints are a place where they evaluate, there's accountability, they show up at this place and, and they say, are you dehydrated? Let's get a physician to check you. Let's make sure you have the right nutrients. Let's make sure that you're physically able to keep running the race without harming yourself. Does this sound familiar? And I feel like in our walk with Jesus, wherever we're at, we need to hit the checkpoint with the Holy Spirit and say, am I good, Holy Spirit? Or have I gotten comfortable in my walk with you that I know how to cruise along on this Christianity? Or am I really not okay? Am I not being a witness of the gospel of Jesus? Am I not full of passion and fire for the kingdom of God? Because I'm going to share with you this morning, that's really why you were created. Living this world is a secondary option, not our first position in Christ. Revelations 3.16, and I'm not going to preach on this today. I'm just going to put it out there. But Jesus said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. Because if you're lukewarm, he said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. That's not to bring uh, condemnation to you. That's the checkpoint. It's a checkpoint. I've been running this race for a minute. I love new believers because they are so on fire for God. I mean, I love it. It's so contagious. It makes me feel like a rotten heathen when I'm around a young believer because they're just, everything is so on fire. So sometimes we got to stop and go, God, am I cold in the things of you? I'm doing the same things. I'm worshiping. I show up. I give. I tithe. I love you. But am I cold in the kingdom of God mission? As Christians, God's not called us to just be normal. Amen. If you're in Christ, there's nothing normal about you. And in reality, there shouldn't be, should there? We should stand out, and we'll talk about this. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I was on my way to church today. I'm like, Barb, just teach the word. Don't get excited. Just teach the word. Don't get excited. Because the exhorter in me wants to come out. But I, I don't want to just have you shout. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to provoke you. And you know why? Because I'm asking the Holy Spirit to provoke me. Because even being in full-time ministry, you think, oh, you're so on fire. And yet even myself can find myself complacent. And I can go through, oh, I know how to put this lesson together. And I know how to preach it just right. And I've got this thing down. I've been doing it a minute. Amen. But, Lord, is there a fire in my soul? Am I living for kingdom or am I, am I living for comfort? And it's so easy to choose comfort because it's what we know. And I'm asking the Lord, make me uncomfortable. And I wish to God I'd have never said that prayer. 
Because he's troubling my heart for the things that trouble him. And it's uncomfortable because it's requiring a change in Barb Pruitt. It's requiring, requiring me to put away the old things that I know and say, God, what is your word from heaven today? So we're going to look at scripture that talks about you being ambassadors of the most high God. If you are in Christ, which I know you are, if not before you leave, you will be. But if you are in Christ, you're a representative sent from God, by God, from heaven, on earth to show his love. Let me say that again. If you are in Christ, you're a representative from God about heaven here on earth. How will the world know unless you are representing the gospel of Jesus Christ? There's too many people that are not entering the church doors that need to hear the gospel. They need to hear your story. They need to hear your place of victory. It's not enough to go from Sunday to Sunday, is it? God is calling us to live for the one who died for us. God's wanting us to shift our hearts. You know, in 2020, something so demonic happened in the world and I think the church is still shaking it off, is that we became very me-centered. I got to take care of me, take care of my family. Take, I got to be safe. I got to be secure. And what happened? It calls us all to look inward and forget the power of God, the ambassador of God in you to be a living witness to the world. And we've got to uh, turn the page and start to look at the world or your friends, your coworkers, your area of influence. You know, statistics say that there are seven people of influence around you. There are seven opportunities to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ in your life. I'm going to look at Corinthians today, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to uh, kind of hit verse 15. And it says this, he was talking to the Corinthians church, Paul was, and he was always writing letters to the church because how many know the church gets off base? We lose our way, and that's why we need the apostles and prophets to speak into our lives. And so he's writing this letter to the Corinthian church, and he says this, he, if he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, and he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. When we come into Christ, listen, we no longer live for ourselves. We have died to our flesh and we live according to the kingdom of heaven. So many of us are wanting the pleasures of ourselves, and there's nothing wrong with that. We'll go with in that in just a minute, but God wants us to live for him. And Paul was troubled in his distance that the church had gotten comfortable, that they were living for themselves and not living for the one who died for them. We need that checkpoint, don't we? Verse 18 says, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. Now let's stop right there. That's verse 18. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through the cross. What does reconcile mean? It means that we coexist with Christ. That's reconciliation. It's not just redemption from sin. Thank God I'm not going to hell. How many are so thankful I'm going to heaven? But that's not the kingdom. That's salvation. The kingdom, he said, when you come in Christ, you coexist with me, the one who died for you. So he offered you reconciliation through the cross, the forgiveness of your sin, the forgiveness of your past, the healing of your broken heart. How many have a testimony for Jesus because of what he did? That's awesome. But we have to turn and give that reconciliation to someone else. It's wonderful that I'm reconciled. It's wonderful that I'm healed and redeemed. It's wonderful the miracles in my life. But are we offering that to someone else? That's living for Christ. He said, you've been reconciled. I can only come to God through Jesus Christ, the Son. But it goes on to say, I've reconciled you through Christ and, say and, gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Welcome to full-time ministry, everybody. 
I ordain you, I anoint you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are called to ministry. It may not be the full-time pulpit. That's okay. We equip the saints. Like my dad said, we equip the saints. We, we let you hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. We herald the voice of God. But it is your job now to go have a ministry of reconciliation to others. Verse 9. <laughs> that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Look how much reconciliation. He reconciled the world, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. What is the message of reconciliation? It's the commission of God to bring down heaven to earth. That's the commission. That's the message. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God was making an appeal through us. I stop there. You've been reconciled. And now you have the ministry of turning around and giving that ministry of reconciliation. How? As if God was making an appeal through you. How will they know if we are not declaring the kingdom of heaven? How will they know the victory of your life, how God saved your marriage, how God redeemed you and took suicide from you unless you are giving that message of reconciliation to someone else? We are mantled as ambassadors God is appealing through us. He's pleading through us. Goes on to say, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. If there was an ever, ever a time in the world and in the kingdom, it's right now to stay close to the heart of the Father. To be reconciled to this intimate relationship with him. Hearing the voice of God. Opening up scriptures and getting fresh revelation and the dew from heaven that the Holy Spirit is speaking in this hour. Verse 21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. How many so thankful for the righteousness of God? I have filthy rags. I have dirty clothes. But in him, I am made righteous. I am right standing with the Father. Listen, you have a new, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. When you came into Christ, you're a new creation. The old has passed away. It is gone. Wave goodbye to it. And now the new has come. And God says, I have chosen you to be an ambassador of me, the great high God. We no longer live for ourselves. What does that mean, ambassador? I looked it up. Two times I could find it in scripture. Maybe it's there more, but the two that I found was this one. And then also Paul, when he found himself in an ambassador, he said, I'm an ambassador in chains. Even in prison, even in a place where he felt captive, he said, I still can be a voice for the kingdom of heaven. And that Greek word there is presbo, presbo. And it's an ambassador, a chosen representative of a ruling authority. And I'm going to show you how to walk in this today. Because if believers could walk in this kingdom authority, it will change your life. It will change people's lives. And it will change what the local church looks like. Amen. Because we're not going to gather just to have a great service. We're not going to gra gather just to have the praise and worship. Oh, that was awesome, praise and worship. I'm gathering because I have my next door neighbor in the chair next to me that I shared the gospel of the good news, and I've been doing it for a year, and now they're here in church, and I'm shopping and jumping and running around this church, not because of praise and worship, because I was used by the great most high God. And my nail lady's sitting here. The lady, that, the guy I work with is sitting here. Why? Because you saw yourself as an ambassador full of authority by the kingdom of heaven. You've been chosen by God. An ambassador is the highest ranking diplomat sent from one country to another to promote and protect the interests of their home country. Think of the high responsibility we have as believers. 
that if we are an ambassador of heaven, it is our job to promote and protect our kingdom country, where we are really from. And I'm going to share that with you in a minute. We should have a righteous anger to the world to protect, protect the kingdom of heaven. It's the highest calling. You are the highest ranking dip diplomat sent by God from heaven to earth to promote and protect the interest of the kingdom of heaven. Listen, if you're in Christ today, you're not a normal Christian. And if we are, we need to change that. Because I will tell you, when you have the power of God living in you, the creator, there is nothing normal about you. You're an ambassador. You're sent by God from heaven to earth. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, I am an ambassador of Christ, sent by God to show his love on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Whether we like it or not, you've been chosen by God to be an ambassador. And there's no greater joy than when you share the love of God. Don't feel like you have to be a deep theologian in this hour. The world would make us feel like we have to have every answer. It, it's a shouting Goliath. It's a bully and intimidation. Share the good news. Jesus didn't say go share philosophy, theology, apologetics. Nothing wrong with that. But that's not what's going to pierce the heart of people. It's the kingdom of heaven. Jesus died. He laid his life down. All the blood shed from his body for the forgiveness of my sin. He redeemed me. He restored me. I'm full of hope. I'm full of joy. I don't have all the answers, but all I do know is you need a savior. Well, what about this? Let's, let's not worry about that. You got to have Jesus. You got to have the lover of your soul. You got to have the one who can change you, the one who redeems you. Stick to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus, they even told, Jesus even told the disciples, well, what if they don't receive me? He said, shake the dust off your feet. They don't receive it. It's okay. Shake the dust off your feet and go to your next assignment. I want to share with you three things this morning briefly of what do ambassadors do. I'm going to empower you today, man. What are the benefits of being an ambassador or responsibilities as an ambassador? What do you need to know to fulfill the calling of God as an ambassador? Number one, you need to know you were elected. You were not elected by people. You were chosen by God. People didn't give you. It doesn't matter what people's opinions are of you. You've been chosen by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He chose you. People may reject you. People, you may feel like, are they going to receive me? What if, what if I don't know everything? And you have to know I don't go as an ambassador by my own. I go chosen by God. In John 15, 16, he said this. Jesus said, you did not choose me. I remember when I was 17, I was 16, younger. I'm like, when I'm ready to serve you, God, like I have some moment in that. I have a will, yes, but the Holy Spirit draws. The Holy Spirit draws. I didn't choose him. He said, I chose you for such a time as this. Why are you a believer in 2024, the hardest time that we know in our generations we've ever been in? Because God chose you to be in this moment. Because he's empowered you to be in this moment. He said, I chose you, didn't stop there, and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. What's the fruit? People are the fruit. Your neighbors are the fruit. Your coworkers are the fruit. People on the street are the fruit. They may not represent them in this room, but that fruit will represent somewhere. God is stirring the church up to be fruit bearers for the kingdom of God. He said in verse 19, if you belong to the world, this is so powerful. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. I want to give you some news today. The world cannot love you. The world has no power to love you. We build all of our life to live for this moment. We live for this earthly thing. We build everything for these earthly treasures that God says clearly don't build up for yourself treasures where moth and rust doth corrupt and thieves break through and steal. He said don't live for this moment. Live for the kingdom. Now does it mean I can't have the worldly things? You can have them. He wants us to be blessed. But he said don't love them more than me. Because that thing that we live for can't love you back. 
the world's going to betray you. The world's going to let you down. We're going to try to live for what we think is the perfect picture idea of marriage and a house and comfort, and it's going to betray you. Look at Hollywood. They have it all. They have money and riches and gorgeous people they're married to and the finest clothes, and they're miserable. Justin Timberlake just got pulled over probably smoking coke and doing them one martini, he said. Why? Because living for the world, the world cannot love you back. He said, I have chosen you out of the world. Say, out of the world. That means this place is not my home. I don't live for this moment. Amen? This is not where my values lie. This is not where my heart drifts towards in this moment. God says you are about the people, the kingdom of God. Where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Too many of us, including myself, got so distracted in living for this moment when it's so fleeting, when really the greatest joy is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are an ambassador of Christ sent by God to show his love on earth as it is in heaven. You're a conduit for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are not elected by people. You're chosen by God. Paul said in Philippians 3.20, and this whole, just read the epistles this week. Um, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, just get in there. It's so powerful. In this, in this chapter, he's talking about people who set their mind on earthly things. He's challenging them in, in the Philippian church. And in verse 20, he said this, don't set your mind on earthly things, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. You are not a citizen of this earth. You are a citizen of heaven And the last thing Paul says in this chapter is, I'm going to press toward the goal of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The problem with us and why we're not seeing the benefits of the kingdom is because we don't know our true citizenship. We're living according to the world standards. We're living according to what the world throws at us to place our value in. And God's like, that's not where I see you. You're a citizen of heaven chosen by God to represent on earth. So I looked up citizen, and it says this. A citizen legally belongs to a country, right, and has the right and protection of that country. Think about that. If I live in the citizen of the world, then the world is saying, I'll protect you. I've got you. I'll cover you. But how many know the world can't do that because the world has no power? There's nothing I can make safe about my world that can cover me. If I'm a citizen of heaven, though, I know my legal authority. I know my legal position. I know my rights. And whenever the enemy wants to come against me, I know my citizenship of heaven protects me, protects my family, protects my stuff. I have to learn what's in the citizenship of heaven, what's in heaven that I need to learn how to behave from and do the um, patterns of heaven. The behavior is what I wanted to say. The the behavior of heaven. Citizenship also means this. You adopt the culture and practices and values of that country. So what do we do as citizens of heaven? I adopt the culture of heaven. What is that? I behave and have the practices in my life of heaven. My values in my life are not earthly values. They're heavenly values. And what happens when I have heavenly value and I'm seeking first the kingdom of God, what's the rest of the verse say? Everything else shall be added unto me. But we're looking for everything else and it's backwards. God's like, seek me. Find out who you are in me. Find out what the word of God says about you. Know your citizenship value and my my value, kingdom values, will protect you. Amen? I love this about Abraham. I looked this up just last night as I was going over my lessons again, and I found Hebrews 11, and it was talking about Abraham. And he said this. He was by faith. He was such a man of faith. And he said, I feel like a stranger in a foreign country. But he had just entered the promised land. 
There was battles in the promised land, yeah, but there was bigger and better things in the promised land. But he said, I still feel like a foreigner. He went on to say he was looking forward to the city that has foundations whose designer and builder is God. Because he knew the only foundation that could ever be built for the future would be the builder and the foundation of God. You can have all the good on earth, and how many want some good? I want good and gooder. Give it to me, God. Give it great, but I want to be kingdom-minded. I want to have the citizenship of heaven-minded. I want to change someone's life, even doing what we do in this church, and I love it. I love this church, and, but what really drives me is when I know your life has been changed. When I know that your marriage has been restored, getting up and preaching a good message just doesn't do it for me. It's knowing that you are doing who God called you to be. And then you now doing that to someone else. Amen. You don't feel like an ambassador. You don't feel worthy. Raise your hand if you don't feel worthy. Y'all better put your hands up right now. You bunch of heathens. We're going to stop and pray for you. I told the ladies at the meeting yesterday, if I did based on what I feel for God, what I do for God based on how I feel, I would do nothing for God. Because I don't wake up feeling anything. If anything, the enemy makes me feel worthy, makes me feel small, makes me feel like I can't do anything for God. But guess what? I remember I'm a citizen. And I get the manual out that tells me who I am according to Christ. And I step into that power and authority that God gave me to be the woman of God he's called me to be. Not based on my feelings or worth, but because I've been called by the Lord to be a voice for the kingdom of God. And I've been doing it since the day I got saved. So it wasn't the day I got this microphone in my hand. I promise you. It was done on the streets. It was done in hospital rooms. And it was done... In people's homes, it was done everywhere. You don't have to have a microphone. Don't be afraid of being rejected. Jesus said if they, if they persecuted you, me, they're going to persecute you. Don't be afraid of it. Part two of that, point, part one is when God selects you, it doesn't matter who rejects you. It doesn't matter who rejects you. It doesn't matter what people say about you. You're a lunatic. You're a crazy Christian. They turn the hallway when they see you coming. I don't know. Uh, we don't want to behave like that. You know what I'm saying, though. Your faith is, you show up in the room and the love of Jesus just walks in. And, and it's going to trouble the atmosphere because you're a kingdom builder. I remember I, uh, I went to San Francisco with Pastor Jennifer and, and Quinn. And um, when I go places, I, I just declare the favor of God. And I feel like I walk in God's favor. I feel like people like me. When I go places, and the second I got off the plane in San Francisco, I, people started being mean to me. But didn't they? She can attest. And they're like, girl, I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, people are so rude, I mean, rude to me. And it started affecting me. I'm like, well, what's wrong with me? Like, do I need to go pray up? And, and I realized, no, 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 wait a minute. I'm a citizen of heaven. And this rejection is a spiritual rejection. It's not a natural rejection. We came off the plane with the power and presence of God. And I'm going to tell you, it agitated some demons in that San Francisco atmosphere. So instead of being covered and protected by the world thinks about me, I'm going to step into who God says about me. Amen? You've been placed by God for such a time as this. When you walk into any room, you've been ordained by God to represent him in that moment. Think of every moment you walk in a door. God, what, what do you have for me here? You walk in, let the spirit of God go in that room. When you're at your job, you're with those people every day, let the spirit of God begin to work. You don't have to run from table to table or desk to desk and shouting the name of Jesus. Let the presence of God and an ambassador looks for the moment. It's like double dutch. When am I going to get them? When am I going to get them? Is it going to be in the hallway? Is it going to be in the parking lot? Am I going to have to text them? Because the Holy Spirit will speak to you. You shine a light in the darkness. So how do we become ambassadors? If you're a true ambassador, they have close communication with headquarters. We have to have close communication with the Father. We have to have fresh oil in this hour. I was, one of my old teachings popped up about the oil. I don't know if you guys remember that, the virgins. And, you know, we can go a long time with that oil in our lamp. 
and not realize that we ran out of oil. And then we're looking to other people with it, trying to get it from them. And God wants us to refill our oil lanterns. He wants that fresh oil from heaven, amen. I'm, I'm asking the Lord for that. I need fresh, God. I don't want to be so comfortable and nervous in this hour to speak truth and to be honest to the people of God. I have to have fresh oil. I sit down with kingdom connection. God, what do I say? How do I speak the truth? Close communication, how do we do that? Open up the word of God and ask the Holy Spirit. Ask him, what's your assignment for me? Ask him, who is my assignment? Don't look for the church. I do want you to fill some roles. You know what I mean. Who's my assignment, God? Who's in my world that you accounted to my trust to be an ambassador for you? I need to hear that assignment. Get his instruction. Renew my mind, God. Build my faith. We as Christians have to listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. We should wake up every day and say, this is not my day, Lord. It's your day. And give me a discerning of the Holy Spirit that I could be a witness for you, for the kingdom of heaven. We need to be a light, don't we? We need to be generous people. We need to be on call. You know why God uses busy people? Because they'll listen and obey. But one person can't do it all. You imagine this church being ambassadors. I'm on call, God. What do you want from me? I'm on call, God. You want me to serve somewhere? I'll serve. I'll give my time. I'll give my resources. You give me a person at my job, I'm going after them. We're going to have a coffee together. I'm going to get to know them. I'm going to find out about their life. I can tell you this, out of all the years of ministry, I've only been rejected one time. One time, that's it. Because people are hungry for the truth. They're hungry for prayer and hope. The world is waiting on the church, isn't it? You're always on call for the one who sent you to represent his country that you are living in. Talk to God about your assignment. Amen? Ask the Lord this, God, where do you want me and what do you want me to say? Amen? God will make his appeal through you to someone else. Just very quickly, it can be anywhere at any time, and you know that. Grocery store, gas station, doesn't matter where. Number one, you are not elected by people. You're chosen by God. Number two, you never represent yourself. You always represent God. Always represent God. I did this extensively, extensively a few weeks ago, but Philippians 1.27, above all, you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourself in a manner worthy of the good news in Christ. What does that mean? I'm a new creation. I'm changing. I, I'm not the same person I was when I came to Christ. My behaviors have changed. My thoughts have changed. My responses have changed. I'm dying to my flesh. Listen, when you come into God, it's not enough to just remain there. We have to be changed by the kingdom of God. We have to protect the citizenship of heaven. Amen. If the Holy Spirit's coming to you and convicting you of things, obey and respond to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Our lives should reflect the lives of Christ. Does it mean we're perfect? No. But it means I'm living a life of value according to the kingdom of God. That means there's certain places I don't go anymore. There's certain things I don't do anymore. I'm in Christ. I'm a single person. I'm going to live righteous before God. I'm going to crucify the flesh. If there's movies and things, I'm going to tell you the enemy is planting not just blasphemy anymore, but blatant um, blasphemy against Jesus Christ. And it's whittled in there tiny. I was with my mom. I'm like, Mom, they just said this. And I can't remember what it was. It wasn't it horrible. It was like, why? Because the enemy's just sneaking that, sneaking it. And we have to have a discernment. Am I willing to turn it off when I'm hearing and seeing things that don't line up with kingdom authority? I'm not talking about legalism. I'm talking about when the Holy Spirit is setting you aside to live as a citizenship of heaven. I'm going to change my behavior so that I can be clear to hear the assignment of God. Colossians 3.17 says, and whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you do or say, I need my car to be redeemed. Hallelujah. 
My driving's a little crazy. What do the world say? I don't have the values of the world. The world says put myself first. But the king says put others first and consider others before myself. This world says get as much as you can. King says give much. It's more blessed to give than receive. This world, hate those who hate you, payback time. And the king says love and bless and pray for those who persecute you. Last thing this morning. Number one, you're not elected by people, you're chosen by God. Number two, you never represent yourself, only God. And number three, you have the authority of the one who sent you. Your authority is not in yourself, it's in the one who sent you. 2 Corinthians 10, I may seem to be boasting too much about the authority given to us by the Lord. This is Paul. He's like, I, I may be talking too much about it. And you know why? Because the people begin to complain in the church of Corinthians that Paul's letters were getting a little heavy and weighted and getting in our business too much. And you know what they did? They said, not only is his letters weighty, this is in the Bible, but they said, isn't he weak and isn't he getting tired? They demeaned the apostle of God that built the church because they were offended by the weighty words he brought to the house. He's just weak. It's easy to see the faults of men and women of God leading and some you need wisdom who not to follow. I'm not saying that. But the apostles bring the weighty word. <laughs> he says, I may be saying too much about how good I am, but I'm going to tell you the truth anyway. Because our authority builds you up. It doesn't tear you down. So I will not be ashamed of using my authority. Oh, the church needs to be quiet. The church needs to be in love. Uh-uh-uh. You may think I'm boasting, but I've got the authority of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I don't walk according to this world, but I walk according to the Spirit. And he has called me and commissioned me. If you have a problem, take it up with the Creator. He wants you to know your authority. Amen. I don't have time to go into all of this. But he wants you to walk in authority. Luke 10, 19. Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. When you're sharing the gospel, it's the authority of Christ. When you're binding the devil, it's the authority of Christ. When you're praying for the sick, it's the authority of Christ. Let the power of God come. It's his power, but it's your authority. He's not going to come down and do it again. He's going to come in through you for you to use your authority for the power to come through. Let me give you a perfect example, and then I'm going to wrap it up. You ever, when you have kids or when you were a kid and um, the little the son and daughter, let's say, are fighting and the little boy hits the girl or whatever, and, and the girl goes and tells on the boy, he hit me, he cussed at me. And so, that, you know, goes and the mom says, you tell him. I said, if he does that again, he's getting a whooping. I know we don't whoop today. It's okay. We whipped back then, and it was fine. And so what does that little girl do? She walks in there. Why? Because she has the authority of mom. Mom said, if you do that again, you're going to get a whooping. And it changed the whole demeanor, right? We have to walk in that authority. The power is not mine, but the authority is mine. And when you walk in the authority, the power comes through you. What are we doing? We're pleading people to come to Christ. We're pleading for people to be rescued from hell. We're pleading for addicts to be set free and delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not just inviting. I have the authority of God to tell you you need to surrender your life to Jesus. I'm pleading you, come back to God. Church can't be weak and anemic. We can't, we can't oh, I'm going to say the right words. No, be bold. Take authority what's right and what's wrong. Why? Because I have the kingship of heaven. We need to have certificates printed, don't we? I want one. I'm a citizen of heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5.20. This is it, I promise. I know I keep saying that. This is it, I promise. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. <sighs> it's not time to play it safe, church. 
it's not time to be comfortable and think my little job and, and this and that, and it's wonderful. We have to survive in life, but we have to plead people to come back to Christ. And I'm not talking a shifting of Christians that go to the next popular church. I see churches pop up, and they're the next best thing, and I see all little Christians just do, 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 do. Well, God must be doing something over there. Well, yeah, because the believers came in unity. There's something powerful about that. But who are we winning to Jesus? God is calling for his church according to the word, not in what we've made church to be like. Church should cut us. Church should make us uncomfortable. But it also empowers us. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and stand to your feet. Father, I thank you today. Feel such a strong presence of the Lord. Holy Spirit's calling us. He's calling you. He's calling us to get our hearts focused on Him. He's calling us to repentance. I'm not talking about salvation repentance, but repentance. Visiting the Father once again. Lord, I pray that this church will be a church that has a heart bent towards you. That God will not live for this temporary life. We'll enjoy it, but we're not going to live for it, God. We're going to live for the people around us. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you trouble our hearts for the things that trouble you. Lord, we receive our citizenship today. We receive it the call to be ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. We're not going to rely on a few people to build it, God, but we, the church, are going to build it. Show us this week, God, in our lives who we can invite to church even or pray for or talk to, God. Remove the fear and intimidation that the world has put on us. Let us be confident and bold in who you've called us to be. You just need to make things right with the Lord. I just challenge you to do that today. You know your heart. You know the things you need to surrender and let go. Just give that to the Lord now. He's so loving and gracious. He's ready to receive that faith. Holy Spirit, we just align ourselves with you. Sweep across this room. Let this church be set apart, God, for this end revival, for kingdom moments, God, for miracle signs and wonders. Let us not just be a normal church trying to build good programs, but Lord, let us be a kingdom church in this hour. We love you, God. We praise you. Forgive us, Lord, for our apathy. Forgive us, God, for our comfort zones. Lord, we renounce it. We call it sin. We put it under the blood of Jesus. We recognize the tactics of the enemy. Lord, forgive us. Turn our hearts towards you, God. Unless we're drawn by the Spirit, God, we can't even come to you. Draw us, Holy Spirit this week as we go. Draw us. Come into our cars. Come into our homes. Come into our jobs, God. Let us not be so familiar with your presence that we forget to invite you in. I cover today with the blood of Jesus. I cover it, God, from the north, south, east, and west. That, Lord, from this time, fruit will bear in their lives and in their hearts, small ways and big ways. The Lord, it'll bear, it'll bear in their hearts. It'll not lay dormant, but it will produce life. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, God. Holy Spirit, arise, arise in this house. Holy Spirit, arise in our hearts. Stir us up, oh God. 
Stir our gifts up on the inside of us, God. Stir your passion up on the inside of us. Lord, let's just pray that we remove our excuses, God. Every excuse that we have, any mindset that's according to this world, God, we lay it down in the name of Jesus that we can clearly hear what your spirit has to say to every one of us individually, God. Speak to us. Open up heaven over their families and their lives. And let some supernatural shift happen that can only come by you. Father, we're always careful to give you the praise and give you the glory. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen and amen. Give the Lord a great big praise today. Listen, I love you all so much. Wednesday night, we have midweek service. Two weeks, we have prayer. Set your calendars aside for prayer. I love you. Have a blessed day. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching the message today. I know if you stuck around to this point, you were touched by the Lord. And we want to get to know you better by following the links below. Out of all the services that you could have turned into, I know the Holy Spirit had you here to hear a word from God and be blessed. Listen, the only way we can get to know you more is we encourage you to fill out that link so we can better equip you to be who God's called you to be. Also, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and we are so glad that you are here. Listen, if you don't have a church home, I want to say to you, welcome home.